One thing that always fascinated me about the TV series models is their ability to move independently of each other. Two engines on the same track could move at different times, and that really helps sell the idea that they are real engines. Most electric models can't do this due to them being track powered. Independent movement is achieved with radio controls. Each engine has their own power source connected to a receiver, allowing independent movement of each train. There are other methods of independent movement like DC controls, but radio controls is what I'm interested in. So, after doing some research, I figured I would try my hand at converting a model to radio controls. I decided against converting the four models I already had, as I didn't want to risk ruining them in the process, particularly my original Thomas and James. So, this meant I had to acquire another model. Fortunately, I was able to buy a damaged Thomas for relatively cheap. When I got the model, it was in an interesting condition. I knew that it was damaged, but the things done to this model raises some questions. The face was being held on with masking tape, the front buffer was chipped, the back buffers were missing entirely, and for some reason the cab roof was glued to the model. But surprisingly enough, the model still ran. The model was also pretty dirty, so I decided to dismantle it and soak the parts in warm soapy water. I was also hoping that this soak would loosen the glue stuck to the roof. That plan failed, so I had to pull the roof off by force, which damaged it in the process. There are four main components to a radio controlled system. The battery, the speed controller, the transmitter, and the receiver. The transmitter will send a signal to the receiver telling it whether to move or not. The signal is then sent to the speed controller which will adjust the voltage from the battery accordingly and send it to the motor. Once I understood the fundamentals, I bought the necessary equipment. A 12 volt Tenergy battery pack, a Hobby Sky transmitter and receiver, and a Tenergy speed controller. I went with 12 volts because I figured that would be more than enough and would last me a good while until I needed to recharge. The speed controller I only got because it was pretty cheap, but it only runs in one direction. I also bought a fuse to prevent any short circuits, a switch so that I could turn the circuit off, and connecting cables so I could disconnect the battery. With all that, I pulled out my soldering iron and began wiring components together. I used this diagram as a guide which proved very helpful. With that done, I opened up the chassis and removed the power pickups and the wiring to the motor. I then soldered the speed controller in place and attached the receiver. I was fully expecting to have messed something up. I am very much a novice when it comes to soldering and I figured I made some mistake, but it actually worked. I would realize that I mixed up the polarity when wiring the motor which caused it to run in reverse, but it still worked. So now that I had the electronics sorted out, I could tackle the model's appearance. Since the model was damaged in various places, I thought I might design it around that, which made me think of Thomas and the Special Letter. In that episode, Thomas accidentally drives downhill and through a brick wall, severely damaging his front. I could scratch up Thomas' front and dirty him up with weathering powder to capture the look from the episode. So after swapping around those wires, I was ready to go. I took my soldering iron and melted the running board in a couple places, trying to mimic the dents in Thomas's. I also snapped one of the buffers and glued it back at an angle similar to how Thomas's were. I then masked off the sides and spray painted the running board white to give it a bit more show accuracy and so that the dirt will be more visible when I weather it. I would then take my paint sharpies and touch up the lining on the body, even adding the red stripes on his boiler and coloring in his tail lamp. I then started to think about the face. I could simply glue the original face back on, but the eyes were loose and the happy expression would be at odds with his condition. I then had the great idea of making a mold of the surprised face mask. I took the mask, filled it with plasticine clay, and glued it down. I then poured a silicone rubber solution on top of it and let it solidify for 12 hours. Once the mold was complete, I popped out the mask and poured in liquid plastic. My first attempt, there were a few blemishes and I used a bit too much plastic. So I cast another face which came out much better. I sprayed a coat of white paint on for the eyes, masked them off, and painted the rest of the face gray. After that, I took my paint sharpie and drew on pupils and eyebrows. I have to admit, the face doesn't look that bad and I'm really impressed with how it turned out. So I glued the face onto the smoke box and assembled the body in preparation for weathering. For this, I used some rust colored weathering powder and some plastic shavings I had lying around to dirty up Thomas. And I used several images from the episode as reference. I then sprayed a coat of matte finish to hold everything together. I would repeat this process several times until I got Thomas the right amount of dirty. So after tidying up the wiring, my radio controlled special letter Thomas was complete. I set up the track and gave it a run, and it was so satisfying to see it go. It runs smoothly at any speed, can comfortably pull coaches and trucks, and it's completely self-powered. Another nice addition to my growing collection of trains. At some point, I do plan on replacing the speed controller, 
Like I said, it only runs in one direction and I would like to be able to reverse. I may also swap the transmitter out for one more suited to running trains. Regardless, I'm pretty satisfied with the end result. Well that's where I'll end the video for today. I hope you guys enjoyed and I thank you for watching. If you're interested in converting a model to radio controls yourself, I'll link the website I used to learn about this stuff in the description. Alright guys, bye!